Hey, my name is Jordan, and today I will be guessing if cards are good or bad. Yu-Gi-Oh cards are good or bad. My general knowledge base of this game is mainly due from like the anime and video games. And so, there's a lot that I don't know, especially with that being limited to like the first, like the third generation of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is pretty much regular Yu-Gi-Oh, GX, and 5Ds. And that's very old, so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a time trying to guess whether these cards are good or bad. Here goes something. Armatile, the Chaos Phantasm. Okay, for this card, oh, must first be a special summon from your extra deck by banishing the above cards you control. You do not use polymerization. Cannot be destroyed by battle. Gains ten thousand attack during your turn only. Well. It can gain 10,000 attack points. That sounds good at first glance. Mm -hmm. So um, it, can't, it can't be a terrible card if you can get it summoned. I'll say it's a, a good card. I'll give it a good card. Well, the answer is that Armatile the Chaos Phantom is a bad card. It's a, bad. It's a very bad card. I'll explain why. Here's the problem. So if you read him again, You'll notice that it says you have to banish those three cards that you control. So now you gotta get these cards out there and that's probably a hassle of, of its own stuff to get all three of those cards played. In addition to all of that, his effect's actually not that good. He can gain 10,000 attack, but he does not really have very much protection. He can't destroy cards on the field or anything. It says cannot be destroyed by battle. Is that for the card itself? Yeah, so if they, they can't attack over the monster. But in Yu-Gi-Oh these days, there's a lot of cards that can just Outplay you him. know, just kind of destroy it, return it to your hand, shuffle it back into the deck, things like that. So usually battle protection alone is not seen as a very good effect. Oh, classic card. Blue-Eyes White Dragon. This, this legendary dragon is a powerful engine of destruction, virtually invincible while very few have faced this awesome creature and lived to tell the tale. Um, this is a first gen like Yu-Gi-Oh card, you know, I don't think it's the most solid card just off of that alone because of where Yu-Gi-Oh probably is now. I, I, I don't want to say it's a bad card either because it's not like you have to do anything special to summon it. So you can probably just play it. So I, He's I, got like 3,000 attack. Yeah, and it's, it's got really high attack starting out. So I, I'll still say it's a good card. Probably a lot better than regular monsters though. It is also seen as a bad card. However, there is a caveat to it. So yeah, it is bad because it's a normal monster that has no effect. But usually if it's just sitting in your hand, there's not much you can do with it, since you can't summon it right off the bat. And then even when you get it out on the field, it just doesn't do anything on its own. You can't just summon it? Like it has to be summoned in a special way? Like it has to be... Oh yeah, it's not like on the show where like Kaiba would just summon them. Yeah, but see... Yeah, it... you gotta sacrifice two monsters. See, it don't tell you that on the card. Yeah, it's just like a rule. <laughs> <laughs> Nibiru, the primal being. Helpful. During the main phase of your opponent, normal or special summon five or more monsters this turn. Uh, quick effect. You contribute as many face-up monsters on the field as possible. And if you do, uh, special summon this card from your hand, then special summon one primal being token. Oh, that's a, that's a lot there to take <laughs> in. <laughs> Who's summoning five monsters right off the bat? Uh, I mean, it could happen. Like, your opponent could... Five monsters? No, there's normal summoning five monsters? I want to say a bad card. A pretty good card, actually. So here's no. why. No, it's okay. I mean, we, we, you know, I mean, we, we thought this would be a, a challenge. Um, so in Yu-Gi-Oh! Today, actually, contrary to what that starter deck that you played with a few weeks ago told yeah. you, People summon a lot of monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh. Five. Five, Five yeah. Ten. Yeah, oh. usually the first turn of Yu-Gi-Oh actually involves normal summoning something, it'll start something from your deck, that thing will special summon itself, those two will go to like both to the grave to summon something from your extra deck, it'll summon something else from your deck, oh, it'll wait. search, you'll summon something else, and that card's actually good for stopping that, because if your opponent summons a lot, yeah. then you can use this and like kind of force them to end their turn usually by like getting rid of everything. So would it be, so is this like a pro level tactic we're talking or like, like intermediate, normal, is this something a normal person playing Yu-Gi-Oh well, would do? Let me jump in on this one, Paul. Oh, okay. You need it just so that you can play the game successfully. Even against like normal average players? So I guess, yeah, that was. Yeah, sort of, kind of. It's, it's one of those cards where even like 
kind of casual Yu-Gi-Oh today, people will still usually summon like about five monsters in a turn. But yeah, okay. Larry dropped it on me, and I want to cut him. Yeah, I like where, <laughs> I like where your head's at actually with that card though. I mean, it's it's good thinking because old Yu-Gi-Oh, you wouldn't have summoned like five times in a turn. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. You know, there's different levels of doing this, and I know, like you said, like it's thinking from a normal person who's just watched it. It's like, all right. They yeah, may how summon, summon one to two, one or two cards. If you do get lucky, if they do more than that, and you know, if your if your head is stuck there and you read this, you're like, that don't seem like a normal case. But in reality, playing real life, you yeah, know, it's, it's so fast. It's People normal. will summon a lot. Yeah. So yeah, we have a spell card, Forbidden Chalice. Target one face up monster on the field until the end of this turn. That target gains up. Gains 400 attack, but its effects are negated. I actually feel like this will probably be a good card if you know if there's a, like gimmick monsters out there, mm -hmm. and it'll take away their effects, even though they may be a little stronger. But they may be primarily used for their effect. So, I, and I know effects are a big part of the game, like you just said. So, I feel like this is a, at least an okay card based on this on a good side. It is a good card. So there are monsters like the first one you saw that can get to like 10,000 attack points, but usually the more important part is like what their effect does, whether it's yeah. getting something to the hand or destroying something on the field. In fact, with the very first card, Armatile the Chaos Phantom, you could use Forbidden Chalice on it, and it would now Just not have that battle protection that it was talking about. And zero attack. Um, we have a monster. Kum Kumongus the Sticky String Kaiju. Okay. You can special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's field in attack position by tribute, tributing one monster they control. Um, there's a lot to Yeah, you get your cards, you get used to it. Yeah. So it's going to be on their side. So you actually, you don't want it to be on too powerful of a scale because you might be giving them a good card to attack you with. I don't know, I wanna say bad. So this card is actually a pretty good card but for a reason you might not expect. But the way that it works is you're tributing one of their monsters to summon it to their field. So you get rid of one of their and monsters. So you're getting rid of one of their monsters. So imagine if they had, we'll go back to the example of Armatile the Chaos Phantom, mm -hmm. and it can't be destroyed by battle, and it has 10,000 attack points. You can just use that and actually tribute it right off their field and then just give them that instead. DD Crow, quick effect, you can discard this card to the to your graveyard, then target one card in your opponent's graveyard and banish that target. I would say this is a good card, um, stri strictly out of that effect because you may be trying to permanently get rid of a card that they have that is troublesome and that will mm -hmm. completely get rid of it because banish is it's gone. All off that effect alone, I would say this is, this is a good card. If you know it's going to be a reoccurring card. Some, a lot of cards come back from the graveyard. I would say it's a good card off that alone, especially if it's a troublesome card that probably is going to make its way back. Darn, I was trying to trick you. Yeah, that is a good card. It is a very good card. So you just send it from your hand and you get to banish one of the cards in their you grave. You don't even have to play it, just... Imagine if, say, you know the card Monster Reborn? Mm -hmm. It just summons a monster from the graveyard. If I play Monster Reborn and I want to summon back my Blue Eyes White Dragon, you can respond to my Monster Reborn with DD Crow and, it and you pitch it and you banish that Blue Eyes White Dragon that I was about to summon from the graveyard and now my Monster Reborn doesn't get any effect, the Blue Eyes is gone for good and like my effect fizzles out. And now you don't have to worry about Blue Eyes for the rest yeah, of the that's game. why I was like, if you know that deck is based around a certain card that is probably going to come back, Yes, then very, yes. very good for that. Uh, but they made the effect very pronounced on this card. So like, you, you, when you look at this card, you don't even look at it as, I'm, a, I'm actually going to use this card to attack. You mostly look at this card as a trap card, spell card, something like that. Yeah, it's deceptive. It has like no, the, the stats are small. It barely has any yeah. like attack or defense. He called it a trap, Paul. He called it a trap. <laughs> he did actually, yeah. So that's funny you mentioned that. You almost view it as a trap. That is colloquially called by players a hand trap. Mm -hmm. So even though it's not like a purple trap card, the way that its effect works is basically like how a trap card would work, mm -hmm. and you activate it from your hand. So Yu-Gi-Oh players usually call those hand traps. So we have a spell card, Pot of Desires, Pot of Greed on the back of it. Oh, Bandit. you recognize Pot of Greed? Cool. Like, that's a very, you know, that's one of the OG cards. There it's a is. big Pot of Greed. This yeah, is- Be careful with the handle, it's oh, kind of yeah, like yeah, tricky, yeah, but. Yeah, it's got some cards in there already. Okay, let me read it. 
Banish 10 cards from the top of your deck, face down, draw two cards. You can only activate Pot of, Pot of Desires once per turn. I would say it's a bad card. If your deck is set up to where you you want to pull a certain thing, this can kind of take out the, the possibility of you getting the card that you may want. But you do get to draw two cards. Does that yeah, sound worth you, it? You can draw two cards, but I feel like the you playing with a little bit too much of it's leave risky. it up to the yeah, a little, little, little too much risk and I I wouldn't I personally wouldn't play it with it because of that alone. So the answer is this is it's complicated. This is actually one where there are some people who like this card a lot and some people who despise this card. For exactly the reasons you said. It's a really steep cost. You're banishing 10 cards off the top of your deck face down. And as you just saw with DD Crow, like once the card is banished, it's out of the game. Yeah. You're not really gonna be like touching it again. But drawing two cards is a really strong effect. Yeah. So there's kind of a tug of war, like even just within Yu-Gi-Oh players about like, do you wanna risk a lot yeah, of you know, danger like... to draw to? It depends. I'll give you that for calling it bad because I think that it could kind of go either way. Cross out designator. Declare one card, card name, banish one of one of that card declared, one of that declared card from your main deck. And if you do negate its effects as well, and the effects on the field of cards with the same original name until the end of this turn. So basically like you can use this to negate any card your opponent uses, but the catch is that you have to have a copy of that card in your deck and banish it. Um, I feel like I'm gonna say it's a bad card because it depends on this deck base. And a lot of times you may run into a deck that doesn't have any of the same card. So I'm gonna make, say it's bad off of that alone. If it was like a thing where everybody was playing the exact same deck, pretty much, or like overall same cards, then it would be way more useful. I'm gonna give you that one because this is a lot like Pot of Desires, a bit of a controversial card. In exactly the situations that you said, it's very good. If everybody's kind of playing the same deck, and sometimes in like really competitive Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, that'll be the case. Yeah. Everyone kind of knows what the best deck is, and so everyone's gonna be playing that, so you'll know exactly what cards you, know, you would need to run to use that card, and it works fine. But if you were just playing a random person for the first time, you have no clue what's in their deck. Mm -hmm. A card like that is extremely risky and might just be useless for you. Yeah, so that's what I was going off of, based off that alone. Yeah, some people like it, some people don't like it. I think it's fair to say it can be good or bad, so. I feel like if it's, if it's too, situational, too situational for me, then I'm gonna declare it as bad. Oh, Sarcophagus. Okay. Banish one card from your deck face up. Um, during a second, Standby phase after this card's activation, add that card to your hand. I would say, I guess with this card, you, you, it can be any card in your deck. Any card in your deck. So you use this, pick any card at all in your deck that you want. It's going to be banished for two turns and then it'll get added to your hand. Yeah, it's a good card because you can pick the card exactly that you want, but you just have to wait a little bit. Yeah. And yeah, I, it, like the duel can be over fast, but if it, 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 it's a better situation card than the other ones, I feel like. Yeah, and you then can. If you can have something like your baseline of defense, but if you won't know you have something that can also give you upper hand, then it helps you throw that card back out there and say maybe if they destroy that initial line of defense before getting to you. There's like kind of a backup plan. Yeah. So we have a trap card, fuse line. While this card is set, target one card on the field in this card's column and destroy it. I feel like it can be good if, if it's played in the right column. Like, it's straight up. Like, if you know that that monster or whatever that card is that's straight ahead is a problem, bam, play it, get it out the way. It can. It's a solid card off that alone, I feel like. It's a trap. So if you had it, like, set, like, here, yeah. then you can and destroy it, any, card any card that's in this column. Yeah, yeah, so, like, and you can have the option, if you already know what that card is, and just place it where it, right there. Yeah. So, you think it's a good card? It's, it's, I don't feel like it's a bad card. You don't think it's a bad card? Yeah. It is generally seen as a bad card. The reason why is mostly just because there are plenty of cards that do what it does 
without actually having to be in the same column as a car. I, I saw that coming in my yeah. mind. I was like, just based off, oh, it may be cars, they can do this and more. If, let's say you had that trap set like right here, yeah. I will generally avoid playing cards in this column and try to just play them in other ones because I'm anticipating that you'll have it. And then if I never put anything in that column, then that card can never be used and suddenly, you know, it's just not very useful for you. That's why I'm saying, like, what if you, like, play it after they've already got that card played? Yeah, that's true. You can always play it after. But then in that case, there are just traps that maybe do the same thing but better. So. Yeah, and that's why I was like, not necessarily a bad card because it still does its job. It may get rid of that key monster that you want or key card that you're trying to get rid of. Just a little situational. Yeah, evenly matched. At the end of the battle phase, if your opponent controls more cards than you do, you can make your opponent make your opponent banish cards from their field face down so they control the same number of cards as you do. If you control no cards, you can activate this card from your hand. Um I wanna say bad, because it's a, it's very hand like very dependent on the number of cards pretty much that are going on. Like what's going on. It depends on you have to structure kinda like it around possibly something that situation happening a little more often. If they do, if you get hit with an attack like that and it wipes out everything you got, then yes, this is a great card to have because it may stop you from dying. Yeah. You gotta take, you gotta take a lot of things. Like, it, depending on, like, for it to be used to its maximum potential, you have to take a lot. A little and, risky. Yeah, like, you're saying. you gotta know, like, okay, they got an arm, like, a good, solid field, and they just wipe what you got, and you just barely made it. Okay, and I want to propose one more scenario to you. Read the last sentence one more time. You can activate All this right. card from your yeah. hand. Yeah, that one. Okay, so, yeah, with that right there, you can just... I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say good off that because you can it can just be thrown out there. It don't have to be your turn or anything like that. And so it can save you really fast. Say I went first and I summoned all of these monsters to the field, right? And I even set some spells and traps. And I don't get to attack you on my first turn, so I end my turn and I'm like, okay, it's your move. If you draw evenly matched, you can activate it like in your at the end of your battle phase and now i have to banish five of my cards until i only have one left yeah so suddenly you've actually gotten rid of like everything in one go and you still have the rest of your hand left and like you know with pot of desires cards getting banished face down means i'm not getting them back like i'll never get to play those cards again yeah. so it's actually a really strong card okay 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 the last card it's a trap card Solemn Judgment? Is that what? Solemn Judgment? Looks like a cult he got going on. <laughs> when a monster, when a monster or monsters would be summoned, or a spell or trap card is activated, pay half your life points, negate the summon or activation. If you do, you destroy that card. It depends with me on this card, because if you, if they're summoning something, it's like, okay, I gotta stop that card, and it can disrupt their whole chain then yes, it's, it will be good for that, but I don't know if there's other cards that do that anymore. I'm gonna say... You have to pay half your life points you to use it. it. Yeah, I like ask, would you play it? No, I, 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 I wouldn't play it. <laughs> don't influence him. Um, this, is his final, this is his final card. He has to decide for himself if it's a good or a bad card. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say bad card. It is a generally pretty good card the reason why is because even though the life point cost is really steep half your life points is obviously a lot even though it's half your life points you're getting to say no to anything your opponent does they summon a monster you're gonna have trouble with no they use a spell that'll destroy all your field no they use evenly matched against you that would make you banish everything like in that okay. last example you flip solemn judgment no solemn judgment lets you completely stop any card in the game, basically, that would make you lose the duel. And say you don't get like a one shot life point deal, like once you're down, like half becomes lower anyway. That is, yeah, okay, yeah, you picked up on that, that is true. The longer the duel goes on, the better that card becomes because like, in your first turn, that's like 4,000 life points. Yeah. But if the duel's kind of been going yeah. back and forth for a bit, oh, I meant like 
you know, 500 life points, half of that, yeah, 250. I mean, like, you summon it for free, yeah, yeah. Solemn Judgment's actually a pretty good card, so. it's actually one of the oldest cards, too. Like, it came in like the second set of Yu Gi Oh! history, and it's just managed to persist as a good card for many, 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 many years. I think I tricked myself with it thinking of playing it from an initial standpoint with like a lot of life points as well. That's a big caveat for that because if you look at it from, okay, I already got hit with a big turn, but it didn't take me out. Mm -hmm. Now I can stop any strategy that you may be doing and it won't really cost me anything. Yeah, so that's basically Solemn Judgment. And that means Jordan finishes the game six for six with uh, cards that he thought were good or bad, which sounds bad, but like, Given where you came from with this, like of like <laughs> you literally don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh, I actually think you did fine. Honestly, it's just it's one of those things that it reiterates even more: read and know your cards and know situations. For sure, that's yeah, the sure. biggest takeaway from it. When you when you look at cards, it um because you're not gonna know what every card in the world does, but build enough scenarios off of what you do know, and you can you may be able to make a better judgment based off that alone. So yeah, for that's sure. what I would say.